Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge. Prophetic insights where we analyze current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Say to serve international, first time viewers, I greet you as strangers and pilgrims. Right here, friends, is where we receive spiritual bread as we are journeying on this pilgrim journey toward heaven. All right, friends, let's get right into it. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24 that when you see these signs, no, don't conjecture, no, the second coming of Jesus Christ is even at the doors. Matthew 24, verse 7 through verse number 9 brings to view various calamities. I want to emphasize two, pestilences and famine. These things are going to become more frequent, more disastrous. I'll also emphasize a third, earthquakes in the sense of calamities. And the Bible says in verse number 8 of Matthew 24, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Things are going to get worse before they get better. But praise God, the second coming of Jesus is even nearer than when we first believed. Luke 21 augments this point. Verse 25 through verse 27. There shall be distress of nations. Is that happening right now? Oh yes. Perplexities, meaning crises and people do not see a way out. Is that going on right now? Oh yes. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Is that prevalent? Yes, my friends. But praise God, the second coming of Christ is near. Let me tell you something. Things are going to get worse. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13 says, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving while Satan is deceiving them. Things are going to get worse. So here's the great question. What is... The prophetic end game. Again, what is the prophetic end game for the COVID-19 pestilence? Other pestilences, the economic crises, yes, friends, licentiousness, climate change, calamities. What is the prophetic end game? Write these things down. Get your writing instrument, your Bible, your notepad, a sheet of paper. Number one, global governance. By the way, before I drop that, write down global governance, one world government. Yesterday, during midday power surge, prophetic insight, I covered the Pope's third encyclical entitled Fratelli Tutti. And I gave an overview from point one all the way through to the end. Take a look at that. Notice this, my friends. The end game, global governance. There it is, my friends. More crises will come. More crises. And they will become more frequent and more disastrous. There it is, my friends. Fratelli Tutti, the Pope is calling for global governance to heal the world's wounds. There it is. All of Europe, all of Latin America, the whole world, global governance. There it is, my friend. Partly strong, partly broken. Global juridical, global political, global economic order. That means there has to be a financial economic crisis. Has to be. And that's what we are told. In the spirit of prophecy, churchcraft, statecraft, global governance fulfilling. Daniel chapter 2, verse 40 through verse 44, global governance, the prophetic end goal. Next point, my friends, write down the prophetic end game of all these crises. The Pope will declare himself Lord of the world. 
and the nations, religions will follow his lead. The deadly wound will be healed. The deadly wound will be healed. Look at this, my friends. The Lord of the world. Pope Francis said, to understand me, read the book, Lord of the world. Headline again, friends. What happened in that book? Crises happened. And then the Pope was elevated to world dominance and everyone followed his lead. This is the prophetic end goal. The prophetic end game. Come on, friends. Lord of the world. And of course, Great Controversy, page 140, spoke about that. The Pope declaring himself Lord of the world. Martin Luther, the Protestant reformer, called the Pope the Antichrist. His throne is that of Satan himself. All right? Write down Lord of the world. Number two, in Fratelli Tutti, the Pope said, he will become the father of nations, the father of the world. That's it right there, a nail in a sure place. Third, the Pope said in Fratelli Tutti, the church will become the mother of nations. Put that down. The mother of nations. The mother of religions. It's right there on the screen, my friends. What scripture is being fulfilled? Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through verse 6, specifically verse 5, the mother of harlots, mother of religions. Verse 18 of Revelation 17 says, this woman that reigns over the kings of the earth, which means the mother of nations, the mother of civil leaders. Friends, we are here. Go back and watch prayerfully that midday power surge prophetic insights on yesterday monday october 5th where we covered this in depth let's move on what is the next prophetic end game because of these viruses calamities economic crises next my friends our sunday law there it is my friends laudata si encyclical sunday rest sunday worship by law move on great controversy page 590 also confirms the prophetic end game next what is the next step on this prophetic end game this journey towards the mark of the beast towards the second coming of jesus christ next my friends it's persecution now put A, persecution, A, that's the first point. Cut off the communication mediums for God's people. Cut off their communications. Look at this, my friends. This is Fratelli Tutti. The Pope says, do not allow people who we label as fanatics, fundamentalists, to have access to the media social media to have access to the internet again i covered this yesterday second paragraph it's all documented marginalize them disenfranchise them cut them off cut off their communication that's it my friends silence them all right next the next step the prophetic end game the way marks the milestone, the landmarks moving toward the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, once they cut off your communication, and of course, let me add this. The devil is very cunning. He's a wily foe. And we are told he will create crises in the land. Everybody is inconvenienced. But Satan is after one specific group. I'm going to unpack that further later on. One group. So, of course, everybody is going to be inconvenienced as social media platforms trample upon our liberties to communicate. Of course. But who is Satan? The papacy. 
the allies of darkness are off or after one specific group all right the remnant of revelation 12 and verse 17 does that make sense if so safe to serve international first time viewers in the chat just send in the amens let's move on what is the prophetic end game the virus the crisis friends here it is friends it is persecution b death penalty look at this my friends there it is cut off their communication cut off their communication this is a digital inquisition note that a papal roman catholic jesuit digital inquisition i hope that makes sense to you move on and even john paul ii claimed to have apologized in the year 2000 yet the inquisition board of the jesuit papist still is active today here it is my friends the death penalty in fraternity the pope says we are not for the death penalty is that so and he quoted two men who were against the death penalty and i covered that yesterday and still the papacy continued to persecute apply the death penalty upon god's commandment keeping people between 538 and 1798 the papacy will not change i covered that yesterday needless i say more move on all right friends there it is and for the common good the death penalty can be applied let that sink in and what is the pope promoting common good it has become global a global persecution for god's commandment keeping people and of course the pope will say the church is against the death penalty and people are falling for that error of course but let me give you a bible for your feet my friends in bible times could the jewish church persecute christ well they could have but based on their laws, they refused to. The Jewish church used the state to apply the death penalty. So don't be deceived by the papacy. Oh, we are not for the death penalty. It's a facade. A deception. Dark speeches. Trickeries. You get the point. Let me move on, friends. So the papacy will use the nations to apply the death penalty. By the way, many nations today support, promote, utilizes. Nations utilize the death penalty. And the Bible says in Revelation 17, 18, the papacy, the woman, reigns over the kings of the earth. Let me give you some hope, lest you begin to tremble and pass out. Revelation 12, verse 6. Read it, friends. Revelation 12, verse 14. Read it, my friends. That is hope for you today. Psalm 91. That's hope for you today. Next, as God covered, preserved Elijah when Ahab and Jezebel sought for him and called him a fanatic, fundamentalist, a terrorist, a troubler, of Israel a troubler in the land did God preserve Elijah yes will God preserve us encouragement may I move on now with that in mind let's go and look at what's happening in New York City the Wednesday lockdown rewind New York City's lockdown to combat COVID-19 I just gave you a first segment to make sense what follows are you ready for this look at this my friends all right new york city mayor bill de blasio here it is my friends will shut down non-essential businesses and schools catch this in nine zip codes to contain covid19 why he says, because people are not wearing masks. People are not social distancing. Then he said, 11 
Other zip codes are on his watch list to be shut down also. What's going to happen to the economy? Hmm? Think about that. Neighborhoods in Brooklyn, in Queens, will be affected negatively along with public and private schools. Friends, pestilences, famine. That's Matthew 24, the beginning of sorrows. It trickles down. Children cannot go to school. Parents, what are they going to do now? Think about it. And what if they cannot work? Pestilences, famine. Friends, prophetic end game. Look at this. Listen. It pains me to be putting forward this approach that we'll need, but in some parts of our city, in Brooklyn and Queens, we're having an extraordinary problem, something we haven't seen uh, since the spring. And we have to address this issue forthright forthrightly. That's why we're here. De Blasio said the shutdown would affect nine zip codes where coronavirus positivity rates have recently spiked. So the plan is to rewind in these nine zip codes, to rewind, to go back, to address the problem by using the tools that we know work, which is to uh, ensure that non-essential businesses are not open and a variety of activities are not happening. You see, friends, on the surface, these things sound plausible. Let's give him a round of applause. Many would say, not me, many would say, that's why I covered in the first segment the prophetic endgame. Whether they know it or not, the devil is in control. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. And these things are not going to get any better. They're only going to get worse. Why? Because Satan has an end game in mind. By the way, the spirit of prophecy says in volume 7, page 141, that this is a drama. Natural dramas don't have eternal consequences, but this drama does have eternal consequences. Who shall we worship? Let's move on. Let's move on. The next segment will cover, follow this carefully. Judges have now ruled COVID-19. If parents refuse to wear masks, they cannot have custody of their children if there are marital indifferences. If parent or a parent refuses to take the vaccine when it becomes available to combat COVID-19, coronavirus, they won't be able to have, have custody of their children. You heard me correctly. Again, if a spouse refuses to wear a mask, receive that coronavirus inoculation, that parent will not have custody of that child or children. That parent will not be able to have a face-to-face -face contact with that child, that children, those children, my friends, draconian laws. Draconian laws, friends. Are you ready for this? Take a look at this, friends. This is Sun Sentinel, October 1st, 2020. Headline says, no mask, no child custody. COVID-19 is a new factor in family law. Look at this. COVID first made family law news in South Florida early in the pandemic when an emergency room, an ER doctor, yes, friends, an emergency room doctor treating coronavirus patients was stripped of custody of her four-year-old daughter. Hmm. The Broward Chief Administrative Judge Jack Tudor Tudor said he expected he expects COVID-19 to come up in family cases for the foreseeable future. Now look at this. 
This is a prime example since that took place in the early part of 2020. Watch this now. Melanie Joseph wants to see her son, but a judge won't let her. Why? Why? Because she won't wear a mask. Who said that? Broward Circuit Judge Dale Cowan. Cohen called the mother, quote, an anti-mask person. A what? Anti-mask person. My friends, from anti-mask to anti-Sunday person. Put that down. Prophetic endgame. From anti-mask person to anti-vaccination person to anti-Sunday person. The prophetic endgame. All right. Look. Anti-mask person who had, said the judge, who had the audacity to brag about it on Facebook. What? That means to rule in this family controversy, the judge, attorneys, must have gone to the mother, in this case, Mel uh, Melanie Joseph, they perused her Facebook post, social media site. Hmm, what is that saying to us? Will they also do this in the Sunday Sabbath controversy? Hmm? Fratelli Tutti, we must ban their communications on the media, on the internet, said the Pope recently. Look at this, friends. It goes on. Miss Joseph had moved from, North Cor from Coral Springs, Florida to North Carolina. Red words. Watch this. Judge Cohen's ire by posting a picture of herself maskless in the waiting room of her oral surgeon's office in June of 2020. Quote, she's one of those anti-mask people. She's what? So this is not an isolated event. No, look again. She is one of those anti-mask people. And she has got the audacity to post that on social media, the judge said. Then he went on to say, she's going to wear a mask. If she doesn't, time sharing is not going to happen. America will speak as a dragon. That's Revelation 13, verse 11. Then comes Sunday, verse number 12. Then we can buy or sell, verse 15 to verse 17. The prophetic end game. Is that not force? Can you see it, my friends? Watch this. Buckle your seatbelts. The next paragraph said, the judge said, when the vaccine becomes available to combat COVID-19, she has to take it, that vaccine. If not, she will not have custody of her son, nor face-to-face -face visitation. Look at this, my friends. There it is. When, the, when this pandemic is over, the judge says, and there's no cases, and there is a vaccine, the mother is going to need to get a vaccine as well. Let me repeat that. The mother is going to need to get a vaccine as well. When I have proof that everybody is safe and the child's is and the child is not at risk or danger, then we can talk about a long distance parenting plan. My friends, my friends, safe to serve international first time viewers in the chat room in the comment section what are your thoughts on this what are your thoughts moving on this same article people are saying the government is using this crisis to abuse their authority government overreach on the guise the veneer that we are in an emergency. My friends, the devil is going to use emergencies to inconvenience everybody in the land. I'm going to unpack that shortly. 
But Satan is after one specific group. Let me move on. My time is sipping away. With this in mind, COVID-19, what is trending right now about COVID-19? It's President Trump's response after he was, reportedly, he contracted COVID-19. Listen to this, friends. Here it is. And listen to the words, please. The words, Mr. Trump, Mr. President, emphasized. And the words he repeated, please listen. Maybe God is showing us from this speech why it was reported he contracted COVID-19. Listen, and, uh, and uh, draw your own conclusion. Listen. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went. I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. We're the greatest country in the world. We're going back. We're going back to work. We're going to be out front. As your leader, I had to do that. I knew there's danger to it, but I had to do it. I stood out front. I led. Nobody that's a leader would not do what I did. And I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better, and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. But don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there. Be careful. We have the best medicines in the world, and it all happened very shortly, and they're all getting approved, and the vaccines are coming momentarily. Thank you. Mm, 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 mm. Friends, I deduced that, you know, let, let me stop right there. Draw your conclusions. Let me move on. Friends, we have entered, my time is slipping away. We have entered, we have entered a dystopian society. These are intrusive draconian laws under various disguises, veneers. My friends, I believe while the virus may be real, I believe it is being used as a Trojan horse. We are now under a 24-hour global surveillance world. This is from the Jesuits' playbook. Did they have an inquisition between 538 and 1798 to overthrow God's commandment-keeping people? Yes, Bible times were their inquisitors set on the track of Elijah. In the days of Ahab and Jezebel, yes, were their inquisitors, spies, set on the track of Jesus, yes, as it was then, so it is today. Look at this, my friends. Look at this, October 4th, first paragraph, my local shops in Thailand. In two seconds, scans my temperature and to see if I'm wearing a mask. Doors don't open if not. This is someone's words. Three cases and so on and so forth. Removes awkward mask arguments for staff as well. Bottom paragraph, Thailand and many Asian countries have lots of amazing solutions like this. This is utter ignorance. Ignorance of prophetic end game. Of course, we'll share more on Instagram as well to show there's hope ahead. That post had a second post below it. One sentence on top. Some schools have the same technology. Some schools have them here in Scotland. That's Europe, friends. Asia, Europe. Intrusive friends, 
Let me talk to you about this. Everybody is being inconvenienced. And of, the devil is not going to give you all poison to consume. No, friends. He is going to take truth and sprinkle error, the poison in it, to deceive us. And many are ingesting the draconian policies ignorantly. Many are willingly ignorant. I pray for their conversion, that they'll become vigilant. Let me move on, friends. In Bible times, did Herod create a crisis in the land? Every family was inconvenienced. But his target was, one, his rival, Jesus. Slay all the male children. Is that in scripture? Yes. Likewise, down there in Egypt with Pharaoh, create a crisis in the land. In the land, slay all the male children at birth because Pharaoh was trying to overthrow his rival Moses. That's two examples. I'll give you a third. In the days of Esther, my friend, was there a crisis? Yes, Haman was trying to overthrow his rival. Haman was trying to influence Hasuerus, the king. Church, because Haman wanted worship and reverence. Do you see it? Yes. Number four, the days of Daniel in Daniel 6 create a crisis. Do you see it? Because those three leaders wanted to overthrow their rival, Daniel. Four examples. That's what we are seeing now, the prophetic endgame. I hope I made my point. Crises are going to get worse in the world. Why? Satan is going to inconvenience everybody, but Satan is after one specific group. His rival, faithful Seventh-day Adventist Christians, faithful Bible-believing Christians, faithful Sabbath keepers, the prophetic endgame. End game. That's the quote I have been referencing. Great Controversy, page 618. I love that quote, but I love this one. If Red words, if he could but blot them from the earth, his triumph would be complete. Satan wants to destroy a small group. And that is what the Pope just said. The small group. A fundamentalist who won't give up the law. They're sick. They're wicked. They're hypocrites. They won't bend. They won't yield. Look at the statement now as I close. Volume 5, page 472. Satan numbers the world as his subjects. Blue words. But there is a little company resisting his supremacy. A little company. Did the Pope just say that, my friends? Last sentence? All right, come back here. Red words. He wants to blot us from the earth. There it is, friends. Black words underlined. And those who serve God will be called a menace. We will be denounced, proscribed. Watch this. We will be betrayed by parents, brethren, kinsfolks, and friends, is that going on right now? But our only hope is in the mercy of God. Our only defense is going to be prayer. Is that going on right now, friends? Our parents who are unconverted, maligning the characters of their children who are determined to serve God? If so, send in the amens if you're in that group. Our brethren between brethren right now because the latter want to serve God if you're in that group send in the amens our kinsfolks betraying their siblings it's going on right now it's the last days are you in that group send in the amens those of you in the chat room our friends betraying other friends because one group decides to serve God, but the other is unconverted. Are you in that group? My friends, let me add one more. What about marriages? Yes. The wife wants to serve God. Country living, hard conversion, 
aggressive evangelism, but the husband has no desire for spiritual things. This coming of separation. Or vice versa, the husband is serving God, but the wife is unconverted. Remember Lot's wife. Are you in that group? Send in the amens. What is our only hope, my friends? The mercy of God. What is our only defense? It's prayer. It's prayer, my friends. Let me close by saying this. Before you go to bed tonight, read Romans chapter 8. Verse 31, all the way to the end. I'll close right here. Isaiah 43, verse number 1, fear not. God is with us. Verse number 2, when you walk and pass through waters, Christ says, I will be with you. When you pass through the fires of affliction, he says, you shall not be burned. With that in mind, those words, I leave this song with you. God leads his dear children along. Is that the song you want, Hillary? Watch this song prayerfully. Adhere to these words. Send in your prayer requests. The prayer team are waiting to lift up those prayer requests. Listen, friends. God leads his dear children along. Waters, fires. Listen. In shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads His dear children along. Where the waters cool flow, raise the weary one's feet, God leads His dear children along. Some through the waters, some through some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season.